Welcome to the live, well, coaching the uncoachable with my good friend or work colleague, Zolt. Uh, we are at the lovely Manor Farm Leisure. It's a cute, beautiful complex of lakes. It's a great little turnout. There's 18 people on it today, and we're only on one lake. It's called Island Lake. It's got a big island in the middle. Um, so we're gonna do the, do the actual draw in a minute. Um, Zolt's under quite a lot of pressure. He's making out, he's giving it a big one. I'm not, everything's fine. But I know deep down he's going to want to do well. And I also want him to do well. But the most important thing is for you guys is basically, obviously, a wall run. I've got my little Desi cam. So I'm going to put out, you know, try and film the bits that actually matter the most is, the you know, where to fish at certain times. Find out what's going on. We, we don't know what's going on. I don't, um, I do quite a lot of stuff here filming wise, but I don't really fish many matches. There's F1s in carp, there's lots of skimmers as well. And the nice thing is about this venue is you can do what you want. You can use whatever pellets you want, you can use meat and corn. And I love those sort of venues because it gives you a lot more options. It can be a little bit confusing sometimes with bait, but to me, that's what you want when you go fishing. You want that, you know, if you do need to change, you can do. Results, um, I think he's might have gone to the toilet, I think, at the minute. I think he's absolutely, uh, yeah, I think his guts are rumbling a little bit. He's a bit nervous. <laughs> so anyway, what, you, what we're going to do, they're going to actually do the draw. I think what you do, you um, you sort of sign your name in, pay your pulls, and then they do the draw for you. Fingers crossed, Zolt draws a nice area, because it's going to be quite tight on this lake today, which sometimes makes it more interesting because it makes it what you guys do week in week out on your fishing so anyway let's get back over i'm gonna get a sandwich have a cup of tea and we'll wait for the draw Pound to the winner. Yeah, why is that because he knows how bad i draw he doesn't want me to draw first is 20 quarter past 10 to quarter past three no swearing <laughs> that's for you yeah. Oh, yeah. no it's not for me right eric bailey so, when did you book in? 37. When did you book in? Uh, Derek Holland. You booked me in yesterday. <coughs> yes, no, no, no. Oh, in this morning. Ah, like before Derek, you came. So this is what I've got to do. Exactly. They're, doing, they're doing the draw as you booked in uh, when you paid your pause money. Oh. I reckon you'll be nearly last. Yeah, probably. Ian Matthews. Nine. How many's fishing? 18. Oh, the pressure's Four. on, Zolt. Oh. Oh. Martin Ludlow. Oh. 28. Bill oh. Smith. 35. Dave oh. Thompson. I'm going to get the worst bag on the lake. 100%. Norman no. Onan. Yes. 12. Dave Thompson. 32. What a draw. Is it any good? Steve Rich. Desmond. 32. I think you've got the wind off your back. Steve Not very good. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. 26. They're all saying. What, what do you think? Uh, we will see. Pressure, pressure's 34. on. Them. Yes, pressure's on. What's your first impressions? Uh, I supposed to sleep yesterday night. <laughs> so you've been nervous? Yes. Why is that? Because I'm, I'm with you. Because you're sitting behind me. Oh, is that what it is? Yes, oh, yeah, and okay. I can't swim. I hope not. Oh, we'll see. Right, well, anyway, that's the draw. Uh, Zolt's on first, too. Should we have a go and have a look? Not very far, we can walk. 32, Zolt. What peg's, uh, what peg's that, mate? 38. Yeah, 38 there, but Zolt's down in the corner, I reckon. It'd be alright. So let's get down there and have a have a look at the paper. You're gonna have wind off your back, Zolt? <laughs> uh, yes. Wind off your back, nice little island, sure. So it means I can fish on the feeder. That's good. Yeah. That's handy. Sure. I may not gonna swim today. Mind you, I've seen your casting. What's wrong with my casting? It's not that bad. Numbers that? I have no idea. Have you seen any number? No. Thirty-four. 
I reckon it's this one's off. There it is. 32. What do you think? That looks great, I think. Nice edge. Hopefully you can chuck to the island there. <laughs> it should, should be. That's good. I like it. And this can't sit next to me, so... Uh, it's not gonna be so painful for me. That's alright, let's do some game. Yep, yep, let's get to the bird. I have a slightly issue. What? Uh, I left at home all of my rigs. No. Well, you're, you're not fishing, you fish the feeder end. You told me last night you were doing prep. Yeah, and I left all of my yeah. rigs in. Stay off, a, stay off a tin. What's it called? Tinder? Yeah. That's your own fault. Just get down there and set your gear up. Okay. And if you need a rig, I'll give you one rig. What? One I used last week, actually. Two. Can I get uh, two? Maybe. I have so what you got a seven mil meat salt. That, that I hope that wasn't the start of our match. That we're out of trouble. Right. So we're gonna put a tin of F1 corn straight in there. No, because that's a lot of my fishing is done with if meat is allowed, you can put your meat and corn mixed together. So that's two tins of meat to one tin of corn. Just smack that straight in. Yeah. Yeah. Get the liquid into it as well. Like that. Give that a good mix around. Go on, get your hands into it. You might want a three-point container, actually. Or get one of those, that's it, EVA bowl. So we've done, so it's halfway setting up. We've got some four and six mil hard pellets, bit of ground bait. This is what you've got to do, obviously, just put the box down. Uh, done the micro, it's got some pro feed. And we've also got Fin Perfects mixed together. Great for, you know, because we have got the island out there. Yeah. Yeah. Is this just no, no, not at the moment, Zolt. Just hold that back. we we'll just stick with meat and corn at the moment. I don't want to confuse it too much. That's it. Perfect, that. So th that's how I sort of add my meat and corn mixed together. You know, you don't have to put the corn in, but I think it's just a great way of keeping fish in your peg. So, yeah, so that's the meat and corn mixed up. Done our pellets. I said, Zolt's setting up as quick as he can. So uh, we've got some four and six mil fins. Then we've got... Um, Two mil pro, two mil fins. Got a nice peg. Bit of room. Wind's going to be wind straight off his back, which isn't ideal considering it is quite a muggy day. We got the island out there. I think we're going to be chucking around about there, but obviously we get Zolt to because we've got some anglers on that side. It's quite tight today. Quite a few people, on it, which is good. Well, that's what these matches are all about. Got a nice edge. Got a bit of room to our right, but the wind is wrong. These are the sort of things that I, you know, look at. I think the pegs to the left are slightly better. They're good, they're good pegs, they are. And that's a flyer over there, peg six. Zolt's on 32. Um, yeah, might be, hopefully, them reeds over on the island look fishy, don't they, Zolt? Yeah, but I think we need to chuck slightly to the left. We've got a spare peg to our left. I think because of the guys over to our right, this is what I'm looking at when I get to my peg straight away. I to the point no, 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 because you're going to be, you're going to be involved with this guy to our right. Look, do you know oh, what I mean? Okay. I know in Hungary you wouldn't probably care, but in England we don't really want to have a, we don't really want to have a fight on the bank. Not really. We're trying to avoid that at all costs. I know I'm a fine one to talk about things like that, but um, so he's putting his little 360 feeder arm on. So we can get like three nets. 
Yeah. Yeah, it? yeah, it's very good. Yeah, it's bang on. Clickers, clicker counters going on. Never so yeah, it. there's my box. I'm gonna have my box sat never just off his left shoulder. You never wanted the clicker counter. Well, no, this I didn't could, need it. I didn't care. This could be. Uh, this could be. They got Adam. Uh, even Adam's out of the office filming this. So he's got. Look at the mess of it, ladies and gentlemen. Look at the mess of it. Yeah. So yeah, we won't, mess, we won't be messing about. This will be like a serious coaching day. We'll be trying to put as many fish as we can in the net. Look, he's got his 70. Always oh, top key. He's put some time and effort into this, ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you. Fair play to him. So, probably want 40 and a half metres old, but we'll get the 60 out just in case we have a unit. So, yeah. We'll get, get setting up and uh, get back to you in shortly. Right. Zolt's been doing some prep on his rigs, so we're going to go through them. Not those rigs, Zolt. That's natural river rigs and stuff. No. Right. So, really important, obviously, for all of you guys and girls out there. Um, this this actual lake is. What do I need? Well, what would you think? Because obviously, it's not all about what I think. Sometimes uh, it's about what you think. So I, I obviously, would up, I would set up a page three, but you would hear me. No, because we can't do everything today. I think we're just about hard pellets, meat and corn, okay. and then obviously some maybe some ground bait and micro edge. Definitely. So I think we stick. Well, out long, it's quite deep on this lake. This is four B sixteen. Yeah, I've got. I've got right. Um, or four B fourteen. I probably go before four B sixteen because it is quite deep. So what main lines we got on that? Uh, Seventeen. Yeah, perfect. So what what float you got? Uh, four by sixteen. Yeah, what F1 float? F four mega. Yeah, perfect for that. So that's nice because you can catch anything on them. Hard pellets. Uh, for sure. For sure, I think it was stick. Yeah, you've done some carpet setters up, haven't you? Mm. So short, we're talking like I think. Four by twelve. I think we need a four by twelve. I think we'll be fishing a top kit because of the time of year. You know, it's sunny, 4B12, yeah, 017 again? Yeah. Yeah, bang on. And then, down the edge, obviously you're going to want an edge rig. I've got edge access 4x16, edge yeah. access 4x14. I've got... Yeah, watch don't drop them. I've got edge 4x14, carp shallow 4x14. I think carp shallow, because there's... I think carp shallow 4 be 14 because there's lots of F1s in here and they can be a bit crafty. They've got a slightly thinner tip. That's what I would use because basically the F1. But you could go between the two. I just think for where we are, it's flat calm. Do you know, I think we need to set a shadow rig up for exactly why the wall, the wind is off our back. I think it's going to be a tough air result. I think the wind's hacking on that other bank. Um, I think we need like a little 4B10. Uh, carp shallow, if you've got one, uh, or or one of those new muggers. I have got <coughs> four by twelve mugger. Yeah, that'd be alright. Because they're they're great not just for mugging, but they're also great for fishing shallow as well. What, what line we got on that? O seventeen again? Uh, that's fifteen litre. Yeah, that'd be okay. Cause I think we'd be fishing for F ones. I would have set that up personally on O seventeen. Okay. But don't. But that's what this film's all about. I, I will take a yeah, but not being funny, that float is called a mugger. And you wouldn't be messing about with that, really. Uh, yeah. You know, the minimum line I would set that on is 017 up to like 021, yeah. even 023 if you go to some venues. But obviously, that, that ain't this sort of venue. So, elastic wise, I think what we've got mostly 13s. 13s. Yeah. Uh, I've got one. The thing is, when you come to a venue like this, Salt, if you fish something like 13, you can't really go wrong if you're unsure. It's like an, an elastic like you can do everything with. So we got three 13s, one, two, a 17 for down the edge, and we also got an 11 for fishing shallow. You see, sometimes I listen to you. Yeah, but that's what you want. Makes everything look nice and smooth. So get that on. So what we're going to do, we're going to get those rigs on that he's just chosen, get, every, get all the elastic ready to go and uh, yeah then we'll do a little bit on bait I think Zolt because like I said he's got his ground bait he's got his pellets he's got a bit of pieces out and um, yeah we'll uh, we'll get back to you in a minute when he's plumbing up.
Right, 13, do the short, do the long line first, 4B16 F1 maggot. Yellow or <clears> red? No, you want black, you'd have to be black out there, I would have thought. Black preferably, because you better see it easy. Okay, so yellow and we're going to black it. <clears throat> if you can fish with a black float salt, for me personally, there's no better way. You can see black against that sort of silvery I, water so I well. I never know which colour I should choose. Yeah, but when you get that silver water, if you can, even some venues I go to and I think there's one little area where I can fish a black float, I fish it because it's so easy to see a bite. Okay. You know, depends really. We could fish slightly to the right. I mean, I'm not sat on your box, but slightly to it. There's a lot of bubbles coming up. That's definitely fish feeding that, is it? Like 11 metres. But what we need to do is get out there, plumb up, because obviously we, you know, we only got half an hour to get going, really. So on there, we're going to be fishing hard pellets. 16 GPM. That's what we'll be doing. Okay. Um, <clears throat> GPM. Yeah. Banded. Banded. Yeah, with a band, hair rig band. Because when I'm fishing long here, personally, we can change. 16? 16 GPM, yeah. uh, 013 reflow. Yeah, bang on. I love this reflow. It, it makes, you know, it's a lot less... It would be nice if we'd done some 6-inch versions of those as well, wouldn't it? But you can't have everything. Uh, yeah. You have to do a little bit of prep, Zolt. So... I did a little bit of prep. Have you done that right? Main line through the hook length, and then hook length through the main line. Yes. Yeah. That's the one. Nice little bulk. <clears throat> I would just get out there, move that float up probably four foot, I would say. Always lick it first, Zolt. And do it slow, because sometimes if you use light lines, it would actually make the line go all funny. Okay. It's not too bad with heavy lines, but with light lines, if you're fishing for silvers and stuff. Should I still be plumbing down? Yeah, there? yeah, let's get out there. Get your pole out. We need to get your pole out and pole. get going. There's some, some fish about here, oh, mate. Some bubbles coming up. There's some bubbles coming up really close in. It makes me think that that silt, that silt is pretty close in on this venue or on this part of the lake. That's the sort of things I'm looking for all the time. I know you're not really listening, but... I do listen. Oh, that's right then. Sometimes I do listen to you. Oh, that's okay. Not so often, but... <clears throat> so we'll get out 11, just get, just get, sort of get out to 11, I would say. Ah, oh, rollers are made up very nice, these dolt. Nice angled. That's one thing is really important. You get your rollers on an angle to make sure when you're shipping in and out, you keep the tip <clears throat> close to the water. I see a lot of anglers when they're shipping in and out, the top kits are too high. As you probably, I don't know, probably pick it up on camera, but the one they're off an angle. So you don't ship straight back, so it's actually off to an angle. It's got two rollers set up, even at 13 metres, which is what you need, <clears throat> especially when you start spending a lot of money on a pole. So he's going to plumb up now. What's that, a 20 gram plummet? Cool, yeah. that's deep, isn't it? Yeah, that's deep. That is deep. That's on a top kit. So what would you be thinking then? I'd be thinking, well, might catch. Top kit plus one? Yeah, definitely. There's always a gamble you take when you fish shallow. Um, sorry, short. You know, do you fish a top kit in one? Do you fish a top kit in two? But we'll try and find the silt in a minute, because that's the bottom rig, isn't it? That's the rig for fishing out long, really. Yeah. <clears throat> so let's get out there. Because we're going to have to set some out long. You cannot go to a match and just fit. Unless you know the venue that well, it's not even worth bothering setting up something long. But you have to. And we're in. I think we're going to be in quite a tough area. Not much deeper. No, it's no. not. So we need to find that. Right. Let's get down to nearer the depth. If you want to keep that float yellow, that's up to you. But I would personally, if it's in that silver water, I would um, black it out. But that's, up, that's going, entirely up to you. Going to try to black it out. But it's, if it's something you don't normally do, then don't worry about it. So obviously what I've said about plumbing up, you know about have a little plumb around. No, straight back. 
straight back because you want to get that float out of the water. You don't just bring it back. Don't mess about. You can't plumb up until you see the float on the surface. Do you know what I mean? You can't tell what's going on. That's what I said. It is quite deep. It's a good top kit deep, isn't it? No, bring it back. Don't mess around. Because we're plumbing up that long line. I know you're trying to look at the inside shelf. But looking at that, we might need a 4B14 short, not a 4B12. Because I don't mess about. When I'm plumbing up, I'm literally trying to get that float so it's on the surface of the lake. Because you can't, you can't tell the contours otherwise. Probably a little bit over depth now. Yeah, you move that float about a foot too much then. <laughs> Bring it back. Get down near to where you want to be. And then you can do your fine your sort of fine adjustments and like wonder what's going on on the bottom because it's really important for everybody that um obviously this is a massive part of fishing is plumbing up and you haven't got that much time especially like all these guys who come here today they'll all be yep. yeah but take bring it down four inches now because that's a float length over so you know you're not going to be fishing like that so get down to where you want to be because you're always just wasting time out there because we ain't got, you know, in a match circumstance, you've just got to get out there. So you want like a float length down, don't you? Off, roughly, not too much. Yeah, well, yeah, it's obvious, isn't it? Because you're a float length over depth. So like I said, you need to be down, you need to be somewhere near your finished plumbing to understand what's going on with the bottom. Nice to drop that straight down. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just slow. Drop it down straight. Right, just slowly. Right, now, now, now you've got that body about an inch out of the water. And then you can move around now and see what the bottom's doing. Does it come up? Does it go down? Is there any like flat spots? It's quite still. Like, drop your, drop your rig down. See what the bottom's like. Yeah, go on. Drop it down. Fast. Yeah. You see a little bubble come up there where your plummet's gone in. Yeah, you can feel it. It's softish. It's not horrendous. It's not very soft. But... No, see the bubbles coming up where you just put that plummet up? So you got, obviously it's going gonna, it's gonna to fizz out there when we're fishing, if we get any fish in our peg. Just bring it back a joint, result. You don't have to fish 13. It might, we might, it might start at 11. It looks like it's like a snooker table, doesn't it? Which is, yeah. most lakes are pretty similar, to be fair. Especially when you go past the shelf. But you can feel the plummet going in there. And that's only a 20 gram plummet. Yeah, yeah it's, it's soft. Same, yeah, it's quite soft. Comes up a little bit there, doesn't it? Yeah, you can feel that just dob it into the sill and you can see wherever you dob wherever you put that plummet is fizzing so you know it's going to be soft i personally because there's a lot of f1s in here as well i think 11 meters would be a really good starting point okay and then if we need to we can go out to 13. Okay. so just plumb up nicely and so you've got like like i've always said to you so the body's just out of the water that's a bit too much there go to the left yeah, go to the left because you want to try and find that's the right. That's the right. Oh, sorry. We want to try and fish to our left because we're getting away from this corner. See, that's nice there. That's perfect there. Comes up a little bit, doesn't it? But it's ever so, it is, it's quite bubbly. Yeah, it's See, it comes up there, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah but that's yeah. not a bad thing sometimes. Look, that, I think that's firmer bottom there. Drop the plummet in there. Drop it from a height. Go on, pick it up. Yeah, yeah. that's a lot firmer, that. Yeah. Personally, I think that would be a real good spot to fish. Fish on, fish on the firm bottom. Yeah, come back a bit more to the left. We'll go to the left a bit more. Yeah, it's flat. It's like a flat plateau, that yeah. is, isn't it? And there's yeah. no bubbles coming up, look. That's a lot firmer. If you come to the right slightly, there was no bubbles at all when you dropped that. No, not as far as that, was it? 
Hey, get yourself marked up with someone on the island. That's yeah. something you've got to okay. you've got to get in your in your head. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. There, look. Right, plumb up there, Ren, because I I don't I think that's a real good spot. So we need to move the float down. Just take a bit of depth off. And these are the sort of things that I'm looking for. You know, it's worth plumbing up, but make sure you get that float. I mean, there's no point plumbing up when your float's that far out of the water. You just don't get a realistic, like, map, if you like, of what you're plumbing up on. Get your float very close to the water, or the top of the, like, the, sur the surface of the water, then work from there. And then you can do your fine adjustments, like getting to how you want to plumb up, and that's what we're doing at the moment. But I'll get Zolt. I mean, that's his long line. All right, just lift up a bit, Zolt, and drop it down slowly. No, don't do that with your plummet. You're dropping it down. I just slowly. That's it. You don't need. If you drop it down, the plummet's going to go into the silt, isn't it? Yeah. That's bang on. So he's plumbed up. So he's got his body of the float, literally an inch out of the water. Mike, before you come back, try and find another area, off to yeah. an angle, the same depth. So we've got two options. Because if the fishing's hard, we might have to go between the two. So go around to your right. Take that 13 meter piece off. So we're not fishing 13 out there at the minute. And try around to the right and see if we can find the same. It just gives us, yeah, come around to the left a bit. It's deeper as you go to the left, isn't it? And that there, look. So you can find the same depth, right? The most important thing for me is I'm, I can find the same depth without moving the float. You can see the bubbles, look, a different bottom there. But at least we've got an option. Just come around to the left a little bit more. You are there, look. So we've got the same depth, right? It's not going to be our main line long, but it's an option, all right? So get yourself marked up with the guy opposite or just to the left. Right, so you've got the bit to your left. You've got that mapped in your mind. Yep. Yeah? Right. And then we want to try and find this shelf. Just plumb up on the way back in, find out where that shelf is. Because that rig will tell you. No, go back out. Go back out. Use that rig now to find out where that shelf is and see how deep we need. Because look at that. That's, that's the same depth. And it, don't keep dropping your plummet in. You're doing it too fast. Just do it slowly. That's it, because it's silty. So you're just yeah, so you're fun. banging this, you're banging your plummet into the silt. You don't need to do that. That's all right when you know what you're trying to find out what you're fishing on. But we're just trying to find, just try and find where the shelf comes up. Because you can use that rig to help you do that before you put a rig on to come short. Right. That's a float length different there, isn't it? Right, so if you come back a bit, come back a bit, keep coming back, no, faster. Go on, keep coming. Yeah, keep coming again. And again, because that's only a float length difference, there's nothing, no different. Right, now there, right, that's going to be rock hard there. You, you bang that up and down, you are fishing on stone there. Yeah. No bubbles, no nothing. Yeah. That's a top kit and what? If you reach top. out, I think a top kitten, if I was here, top I would, top yeah, one. top kitten one. And I reckon that's only going to be 18 inches shallower than where we're fishing out long. Yeah. So we need that. Right, come back and adjust your line if you need to adjust it now on that rig. It's all really important. So what I've done, what I've done is use that rig, like, well, Zolt's used that rig to find out the depth, where it bottoms yeah. out. Wind, yeah, but the wind's off your back, so I would fish quite short today. Okay, like I would take, I would literally take that off and put another loop below that. No, no, too short for you, Zolt. Yeah, take that, just snap the loop off at the Dacron, right, and just tie another knot directly below that, as close as you can get to it. Like yeah, it's up to you. If it's your fishing ability. You need to fish comfortable. No, you need to fish comfortable. So what Zolt's done is brought the rig back, we're fishing long, use that rig as a bit of a guide to see where that shelf comes up, and then you can get a very, you can get like a rough guide to how deep it is, 
on that hard bottom. And like I've always said on our videos that we do for Preston, if this time of year especially, you need to get on that hard bottom, especially when you're, you know, when you're fishing venues like this. Even though the wind's off our back, I think it's the best chance of maybe catching short. We can always use that rig if we wanted to, to get onto that silt bed shorter. So there's an option. He's just got to put two sections on. So he's just cutting the line down. So 4B16 uh, F1 maggot out long, because it's a good top kit deep, that result, isn't it? Uh, yeah. yeah, so it's probably six foot. <clears throat> well, they're 2.4s. So I reckon that's six, six and a half foot deep long. Right, let's mark that up, Emma, your tip X. Um, or whatever you, whatever you normally use. Got the right, we'll put that on. We'll sort, we'll, no, we'll sort that out later. Okay. Oh, I have actually. But give me it back after. Let me have it because then I can. That means I can keep me tipex. Right, so that's all marked up, ready. Okay. But we so wouldn't. We need the long line. Long line, short line. We set up a 4 b four twelve, didn't we? Not set up, but we've got a four b twelve out. Yep. Looking at that depth, 4B14. I think we need a four b fourteen. Still a carp excess? Yeah, carp excess, because I think we're just fish meat and corn short. Hopefully we won't get bitted out on it. But, I, you know, that happens during matches, and all of a sudden your line can change anyway. <clears throat> we need to boogie on because we are running out of time. Yeah, I know. So we know now we need to get on that, that line. And to be honest, though, what I'm thinking, in my mind, if I was here in a match, I'd be thinking, because we, because I don't know it, and, you know, I have done some an odd day here. If you look where that wind, that wind is hacking straight into that island, I think the feeder could be quite a good starting point rather than a short pole. It's a gamble that you always Actually, take. I was hoping that you're saying that. Why is that? Because I'm much more confident on the feeder than the pole. Well, you might not be on the pot. I might just... Now, you shouldn't have told me that, should you? Not really. You should have kept that quiet. Yeah. Have you got a hook on there? No. Oh, just checking. I thought you'd used that rig already. So, obviously, meat, we can get away with, like, a 14, you know, GPM, XSH. We don't really want nothing seriously heavy. We don't want the XSO2s on there. Uh, I think a 14... What have you got? 14 GPM on the 15. Yeah. Or, yeah, bang on. Because because of the mixed fishery, it's skimmers, F1s yeah, and everything, carp, everything. you know, everything. <clears throat> and we could always go up to a size 12 if it all gets kicking off. But this might not go. It might, it might not. You never know with that sort of inside line. And I just hope we don't get sort of bitted out. So we know, we know roughly, you can use that rig as a guide. I reckon if you put it up, you've got your depth markers on there. Yep. 60 inches, I reckon. That's the nice thing about having depth marks on your top kits. Just bring that down to 60 inches. Yep. Yep, and now we go. So you can use that rig, it's all done, because you've got your depth marks here. And we know it's about 18 inches shallower with 60 inches. So that rig, you can just bring it down to 60 inches and plumb up. And I think we're going to be quite, <clears throat> quite close. Top kit in one, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. yeah, because it's, it's this area of the lake. It's deep, isn't it? Right. So come back, move your float down three inch. So don't mess about. Get your float down to close to where you're plumbing up. And then you can, un then you will understand the bottom a lot better. Because that's nice. That's a lovely depth. For that. That's like five and a half foot. Right, let it come back towards you a bit. And then plumb up to the left and right. You want to be fishing in front of you realistically. Yeah, try and fish in front of you, bang in front of you, if we can. Yeah, come back to the right a bit. Yeah, it's nice there, isn't it? Yeah, it will come up though, because you're coming onto an angle. Right, just come back a bit more, just move the pole back, see what it should come up. Yeah. yeah, so you know you're fishing on that stony, gravelly yeah. bottom on the slope. So come up, you want your pole 
right to the end of your um, arm, if you can. Yep. Yeah, because that's where you're going to be fishing, isn't it? Yep. So if you plumb up as normal, so you want to adjust that a little bit. <clears throat> And this is a real, you know, really important part of fishing. Like that, look at that. If you can see that on the camera, literally. Let me get my Desi cam going. You probably won't pick it up on here. No, I'll leave it actually, because it's a bit too far away. That's bang on. Right, so we know we're fishing now. You can adjust your line now between your float and your pole. You get that right, how you want it. Probably quite short actually, because you're only fishing short. Obviously, the shorter you fish, the easier it is to fish short lines. Not too short, Zolt, because, yeah, about, about sort of 14, 16 inches, but a bit more than that, I would. Just a fraction. That's it. Just comfortable. So you don't get tangles and stuff, you know? Yeah. It's all well and good fishing really, really short. But it's always nice to fish a nice distance where everything's nice and smooth and you're not getting into any tangles or anything like that if the wind was banging our face really strong you probably have to fish really short okay. otherwise the, obviously the wind could blow the float underneath the pole tip um, normal what do you want to put an XR on uh, no a medium well you want med you either want a medium XR or a small in uh, flatbed I'd probably stick with a flatbed at the start uh, I would... um, uh, 30 is quite a way Right, we're just about to um, set the feeder up. Now, feeder choice, obviously, with the islands, about 30 it's odd metres, I would say. 30 metres, something like that. So I think we're going to want a 30 grammer. Now, obviously, you've got your, you know, your ICS system, which you can flick between whatever feeder you want, really. But I think today we're going to start on a flatbed because the bait melts off so so much quicker with them and then see what happens then we can change over to a, a XR banjo if we need to so he's just getting himself sorted out with that got a little 10 foot Sapira X all made up there just inline system ICS system it's got his 520 reel 8 pound sinking feeder mono so he's just about to do that that hook looks massive Zolt on that uh... I think he's been on a pile recently. So you want a 16 on Zolt, 16 KKH or KKM, because we are fishing for F1s. That's one thing you've got to bear in mind, Zolt. There's a lot of F1s in here as well. Okay. And, you know, the, the carp in here are quite big. There's a few smaller ones, but we're just about to clip up to the island now. It's a clip on, but I don't know what Yeah, he's, he's got the clip on, so you can have to chuck out and take that off. So anyway, let's get out and clip up to the island. <clears throat> so he's opted for a 30 gram. No. So you're going to have to go to the left salt. To the left? Yep. You need to fish. You've got to take advantage of that spare peg to your left, because you've got anglers over here to your right. Now, I'm not saying that one of them might not have a feeder chuck. I think the guy to your right, immediate right, he might, I don't think he's actually got a feeder chuck, to be he, honest. And he didn't set up a feeder. No, so you, you're all right. But I would be chucking to the left. You've got a bit of space to your left. How left does? Yeah, like where that little sort of willow tree is growing in the bank, probably about here. Okay. So what we do, cast out. Zolt does quite a lot. He's gone back in the same spot. Why are, you, why are you chucking to the same spot? No, it wasn't the same. It was. Well, it was to the left over here, Zolt. Left, left, left. You don't. You don't. You want to get away from the other anglers, so you got your own nice little spot. Look for the bank. You've got loads of reeds there, aren't you? Thick reeds. If you look to your left, you've got that bit where the reeds have been cut off, and you've got a little bit in there where that little tree's growing out. You want to get as close as you can to the bank. I know it's cast into your left, but it doesn't matter because you've got a spare peg. But that's what I'd be looking for. More left than that, even. Even more? Yeah. Where that little tree's going out the bank, look. See the little tree? But that's opposite here. No, 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 it's not. I've walked down there before the start. 
That's what I do. It's all the little things. You see the cut off reeds? Yeah? Yes. Where the duck is, that's the spare peg. That is the duck. Where the oh, duck yeah. is now, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, where yeah. you need to be chucking your feeder. Just slot you to the right of that duck. This is what I do when I'm you know, fishing. You know, you're not, you're not breaking the rules. You're not, you know, you're just, that's better. You are, bang on. Over there? Yeah, that's perfect. That's where you need to be casting. Okay. So you are in between you and the next platform. Oh, okay. You're not past the platform. You're not in front of the platform. So that's the sort of thing I've done as soon as I got to your peg. Well, you from here, it looks like that. Yes, I, I know, but it's cross. not. Until you get to the next peg and have a look, and the reeds are really thick to your right, and that's going to be deep. But to the left in that gap, you're going to get in shallower water, oh, which okay. is going to be, you know, bear in mind we're in summertime, aren't we? Uh, so do you want another, another cast to make sure that you're like clipped up at the right, you're not going to you're not going to put it in the tree first chuck? Well, there's no point laughing about it, because this could happen, and I will be filming it. It's going to be a long film, this. Well, if you can do that every time, then I'll go and buy you a cup of tea. Thank you. So he's all clipped up. That was, he does quite a bit of feeder fishing seeds out, so he's all right. So we're going to get, uh, what are you going to put on her, a 16 kkm? 16 kkm? Yeah. Nice hook, not too heavy. About perfect for this sort of pet lake. So that's the feeder done and dusted. Job done. Right, down the edge now. Now there's a lot of cover down the edge on this uh, on this complex, or well, on this lake anyway. Now getting into shallow water, have a look to your left as well, Zolt. Because obviously we were trying to get in, if we can get into like 18 inch, but I'm not sure whether we can do that. Is it shallower to the it's left? Shallower, yeah. Right, just get this plumb up down there, and On the left? Yeah. Because it's shallow water, we've got to get the, you need that option to get into shallow water. I'm not saying we're going to catch a lot down the edge because I think the wind's completely wrong, but you never know. I've been on venues before where I can't really show you a lot, ladies and gentlemen, down the edge here because it is very, very reedy. It's very, very nice though. Let's have a look. Yeah, it looks nice down there, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a bit more, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so I reckon that's like taking like another two inch off. And sometimes when, because this lake, there's no real ledge short. It is literally goes like right into the reeds and then comes out. Now, it's more important to me to find a certain depth when it's like that. Something like that? Yeah. So go into the bank a bit more. Yeah, like that. That's why I'd be plumbing up like that. So take two inch off. It's nice there, isn't it? It's like a little flat yeah. area. So take two inch off and we'll be away. And then we can mark that up on the top kit and let everybody know what we fished in. Probably like 18 inch, I reckon. Yeah, that's it. So we got a 4B12, is it 4B12? Carp channel or 4B14? 4B14. Here, yeah? Yeah, bang on that. So, yeah, you just come out a bit, it drops off, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah, nice though. It's nice and flat, yeah. that bit. So make sure you that's the top kit in one. Top kit in I mean, one. you could go further, but that bloody, you know, that reed thing sticks out. It's going to be yeah, a bit of a nightmare. Here is a bit of hole. Yeah, so it's, it's nice. Yeah, so we're job there. done. So there you go. Just put that down the edge. About 18 inches of water. And then we're going to start on a feeder because of the wind off our back. And then see if we can get a few early fish on the feeder. Keep you tuned. A few pellets, a couple of sixes, not many, just literally, I know it's a, a, it's hardly anything, but it is that sort of fishing. There's been a few fish caught, not many. I think it'd be a tricky one. You've actually lost one in the reeds, haven't you? Yep. On the feeder. Not too many, just stop feeding. No, not constantly, it ain't okay. about that. No, mm -hmm. do you love me? No, not yet. Is it just watch the tip. Is it any chance that you can no. get my Red Bull from the van? No. Please? You don't deserve a Red Bull at the moment. I need a Red Bull. I don't deserve it, but I need it. Little liners. I think you're going to have to be in and out really often on that feeder. Like two minutes? It's not going to be... Two minute cast? Yeah, two or three minutes. There's a few liners there, look. I think if you get, you know, the opportunity is basically they'll be on your feeder, suck all your bait off and they're gone. Okay. So just cast a new one, isn't it? Yeah, give it another... Oh, that's on. I tell you. 
You don't need to strike like a like a hero either. It's on, isn't it? You know as well as I do, when you get a bite on a method like that, it's on. I know it's hard not to strike, but you just need to pick up. The last two bites you've had. Oh, there's a fish on there, isn't there? Yeah. Oh dear, that's a tiny fish though. Don't matter. Oh, and you have got a net. He's not just netting that because yeah. it's because you have to on this venue. You've got to net every fish. There's one, first fish. Skimmer, what well done, Zolt. Oh, yeah. Right, you are. Thank you. Is this on, Adam? It's recording. Yeah. Right. Let's get back out there. You can always, you know, we've only just started, so my crew's around the feeder, double loading the feeder. Some of you can, I try a lot, which is what Zolt's doing at the moment. It's very slow at the moment. Yeah, and then I'm very slow with the match. Bit right? of both, bit of both, Zolt. And we're just pinging a few pellets on that 11 meter line, not feeding anywhere else. Just trying to get it as close as we can to those reeds, really. Dangerous. That's better. That's beautiful. Nice cast, that. And Zolt, what I said to Zolt was, do not wind. Literally, let your feeder go in, hit the bottom. There we go. That's what you do when you get a good cast. See, Zolt, well done, mate. Just take your time. Third or fourth cast on the feeder. And he's just lost that one. <laughs> I did say take your time. Oh, dear, Zolt. Never mind, just check your hook length. Yep. Make okay. sure your hair rig's proper. Anyway, we've had a bite. It's a nice cast that, it was his best cast, and he hooked that within five or ten seconds of it going in. So, looking promising. A few fish coming out, not many. I don't think, you know, it's not a great area. I think this will be a tough area today, where result is, to be honest. And we'll make the most of the, make the, most of the situation, I'm sure. So he's just casting back. Oh, yes. Yeah, that is in the danger zone, that Zolt. If we don't get a bite there, we'll be amazed. Just take the tension off. Just slow down a little bit when that feeder goes in. Just take your time. So important you don't drag that feeder on the bottom. And what you've got to remember, Zolt, when I'm fishing, right, I'm looking round... What, what else is happening? There's nothing happening really. It's really, really slow at the moment. There's a guy on the other bank up there, he's catching. Where? Um, see the guy in the Matrix gear? Yeah. He's had a few fish. <clears throat> is he on the good peg? Yeah, it's a good area, mate. That's why there are three pegs in a row there. Tells you what you need to know, doesn't it, really? He's on, he's on. Well done. Little fish. Yeah. The geese are coming to see you, Zolt. The geese are coming to see you, Zolt. All right, geese. <laughs> All right, geese. All right, geese. All right, geese. Don't forget to net him. Yep. Well, anyway, that's not a, not a swing size. Is it an F1? Yeah. Might be a stocky. And then we got Zolt into a, yay, Zolt, first stocky, don't lose him, he lost the last one. Well, I just point, you know, you don't have to take my hat off either with the landing that handle, do you? There's just no need of it. So first stocky on a little method, double loading the method. I just said to Zolt, when he cast the feeder in, just keep everything loose, don't tighten up too much. At the moment, he was tightening up, and he's like, I said, that might be moving the feeder. He's like, you sure? And I'm like, well, yeah, it could do. So we're on a little krill, little krill band them. So double loading the feeder, cramming it on. Cram it on a bit harder than that, Zolt. Don't be afraid to cram it on. And the art of that, right, is the first time you put it on the feeder, don't put as much on. So yeah. you basically, it's in the frame, right? It's in the frame of the feeder, yeah. But when the first bit goes on, just try and put the minimum you can on, because it holds on the feeder a lot better. But anyway, you're right. That was a nice cast as well, that was. That's all right. Oh, yeah, he's in. He's in. That's it. Not. 
And one little tip, I would say, when you're feeder fishing, you can always take the bell line back over with your fingers, not Watch actually it. wind. He's on. See? This is what coating's all about. Don't get upset in the locals. I'm more afraid that I don't get upset you. Oh, he's upset me, or he's upset me already with just a few dodgy casts and a few bit of dodgy catapulting. And for result on today with the wind the way it is, it could be a lot of feeder fishing, but that's what it's all about. That's a better one, Zolt. Make sure you get here, mate. That rod's lovely for them little F1s as well, isn't it? Take your time, there's no rush. That's a better fish. You were pulling a little bit too hard on that. We are here all day, remember? You were pulling a little bit hard, that was his own fault. Right, a little bit less in the mould if you can. Okay. Next time, not maybe not this time, but next time. He was pulling a little bit too hard for the circumstances. They are F1s. And they need to be respected, Zolt. But he's doing well. Casting's good. It's not easy casting to those reeds out there. There's a lot of cover. It'd be nice to have a bit of bare bank, but we ain't got that. Nice. Ah, oh, mate. I'm gonna come down and give you a kiss in a minute. Don't do that. No, not. Don't That's better that. now. You've got yourself in a little river now. We've moved the bait, bait box, bait boxes around on the side tray because his pellets were too far from him. So everything's to hand. That's it. It's getting into that little rhythm now. Like I said, we've not fed the inside, we've not fed the short line, we're just concentrating on the feeder, stroke, that 11 meter line. There you are, Zolt. He's on. Don't worry about drinking, we ain't got time. Missed that one. Might have been a little fish. A bit less in there, put like three quarters. No, less, 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 that's it. You want it so it just about grips on the mould like that and then crush it on. You know when you can feel the frame? Yeah coming through the feeder. You can even take a little bit off with your finger once you've pressed it on. It makes a big difference. Oh. Yeah? Brilliant, well done, mate. What's up? Well, yeah, but Adam, this is this this is the thing you've got to understand. Just take your time, Zolt. Take your time. Get the rod on your arm, look. The rod on your arm. No, underneath your arm, so it's the extension it's of your rod. Yeah, but you're holding it. All right, yeah, I'll let you off. It's more important to get it out. That's it. That's the sort of pressure you need to put on it. You don't need to drag them out. It's a little carp in it. I'm going to get this on Desi Cam. It might come off if I do that. <laughs> you should switch off that camera. <laughs> it's going to come off. So like... Well, we're on, we're on Desi Cam. Zolt's into his fourth fish on the feeder. He's casting nicely. Let's have a close up. I'm just changing things around a little bit on the feeder at the moment, just putting my crews in. in that full concentration. Now he knows what I feel like when I'm filming in a live it's match. A yeah, he, yeah, it is a nightmare. Well, I'm glad you said that. So we got, I said, them little flatbed. Is that a little cart or a little left one? Fight left well, one. don't they? Yeah, they Water's they looking really nice and fresh actually here on this venue at the minute. They are angry. Go on, so I'll have him. Oh, come here, baby. Yes. The left one, little pink krill bandum. Just get him back out, get him in, get back out and get another one's out. We got on there, 16 kkm. Yep. Spot on, get him back. See them little indications, those out. Yep. That's the, what I mean, you're looking for that and not be funny. If you don't get a bite of in like 20, 30 seconds, just we'll wind it back in. Do you know what I mean? Well, no, 20 or 30 seconds, not 
it's it three was, seconds. Yeah, but it was a, for a minute, yeah. good minute. But if you get that little indication, it's always worth leaving it. Just like half a minute. And now, obviously, if, if bear in mind, we've only caught little left ones, haven't we? It might be worth putting a micro band them on. Just to try it. So come on in, Zolt, run us down, run us down how it's going. Uh, I've got three, four F1s, a couple of good size, better size. Uh, I lost two because I was pulling too hard. Yeah, you always lose a few anyway, especially stockies. Your casting's awesome for them reads. So, Tell everybody why, you know, obviously, just talk about the feeder fishing at the moment because we obviously you started off loading the feeder normal, didn't you? And then Yes, we're using a flatbed, 30 gram flatbed method, uh, double loaded. I'm getting better with the loading. And the bites are coming actually quite quick, like really quick. And I always forget to feed the pole line. No, you're starting to get into a little rhythm now. Actually, the pole line started to fizzing. There is a few bubbles, yeah. I can't really see them from where I am, to be honest. It's quite difficult, isn't it, round you? It's not, yeah, it's not, it's not okay. um, it's at the moment. Difficult. We've been going for like 50 minutes. And there's not, there's a guy fishing because that's what I'm always looking for the guy to your right's fishing shallow he's only catching little tiny fish he might be loose feeding casters or four mil pellets I can't really tell but they're the things that I'm looking for all the time you know but it is quite difficult there's a guy on there's a few fish being caught in that wind that looks really nice on that other bank yeah. that wind's hacking down there it's going to be quite difficult for them to fish the pole though with that wind, or the side wind, but. But it is slow, isn't it? It's quite slow at the moment with the pressures on the lake as well. We've just got to keep going on this feeder at the moment. Yeah, there is. So yeah, it's quite tight. A few liners there. Then obviously Zolt, we've done a mixture of you've got your match method mixed marine. Yeah. You've got a mix on there, which is what I would have, which I told Zolt to do. You've got 50-50 my cruising ground bait, and that is definitely our next stage. Maybe go down to a, a micro bandum instead of a six mil. Okay. Start putting some ground bait and micros over the feeder instead of just neat micros, and that might just switch them on. So I think have a quick. I would have a quick cast with that, with that six mil band them on. With the mixture of 50-50. Yeah, to see what happens. Because there's, there's only F ones being caught at the moment. Always worth trying to put a yellow band them on as well, but we'll just stick with that at the moment. That's what the ones you've caught on. So same process. Double load them up. If it was absolutely solid. I wouldn't even bother. I'd literally just be okay. three quarters of mould, put your bait in it, bait over the top, bang it back in the mould and you're away. But because it's a bit funny at the moment, but this is where you've got to keep going. You've got to keep trying to build them, trying to get them coming to you. A lot of the guys have come off the feeder, they're on the pole and it ain't really happening. Lovely. And that's gone in differently as well. You're a dart, it's like a stone going in. That's the sound what I'm looking for. Yeah, definitely. Nice big like, you know, it's literally like someone chucking a stone in that. Um, you know, obviously I'm looking around. There's a few guys that have been on the feeder and the bomb. They've now tried the pole. They haven't caught anything on the pole. So to me, oh, hello, Zolt. I think that might have worked. Okay. Off. Yeah. Dear me, Zolt. 
perfect. Probably a stocky. Yeah, it was all right. It was a little stocky. And you've got to pull a little bit out. It's got a bit of reed on there as well, look. So he's probably gone in the reeds a little bit. Pulled the okay. At least you come out with a bit of reed. So we're just going to stick with that now. Just got that bit. Of, probably, maybe, probably should have put ground bait around earlier, but it's always worth having a chuck on my to try and catch the old carp if they're on the bait. Right, so we're just going out on the pole line now. The, the field line, we had a few F1s. And it just sort of just completely went. It is hard. It's hard this area. Very, very difficult part of the lake. It's going to be a tough one. Gary on peg six over there is having a few, which is a, I know that's a really, really good peg on this lake. It always has been for as long as what I've been coming. Is that a few bubbles coming out, Zolt? Yep. Yeah. You're going to have to go really too. careful, mate, because even just tapping a few pellets in. So he's just adjusted his float a bit. He's had his float stuck up a little bit. It's just got it nice now. Look at them bubbles coming up. They'll be they'll be F ones I would have thought. But we have got the option, even to change that to meat and corn out there. But I know from past experience, there's a lot of hard pellet fishing on this venue. And as we all know, we go to venues. There's lots of small fish, and you're sort of forced into sometimes where hard pellet, you have to sort of fish hard pellet to get through the little fish. Two on my left, he's got a decent fish on the Yeah, yeah, don't worry about it, you just concentrate on your fleet. Would you lose feed now, though? No, no, we've been loose feeding, obviously, whilst we've been fishing the feed, and I just think when we go on this, just don't lose feed, just tap a few pellets in and see what happens. Not much, to be fair. No, but it's fizzing. And you get that a lot. You can just lift and drop the float just like four inches. There's a few people gone out on the pole now and there's been a couple of fish caught but not many. Not, not in this area, uh, definitely not in this area. That is some unit cruising. Yeah, he's on the move. He's boogie. Oh, hello Zolt. Well done. Nice bite as well that, wasn't it? Yeah. A little stocky F1 I reckon. It is tough and you'd have to be patient, I think. Or is that a bream? No, F1. This is what you've got to go very careful. You don't feed too much. I know it's... Because when you're on that soft bottom, mate, it is it's very, very tricky. So, that's it. Knock me out again. <laughs> Sorry, that's... It's all right. Just take me eyes out. You know I mean, I need the I safety, need safety glasses on. I didn't mean it. Actually, I did, but... So, just cup in. I would just put like six or eight, four mils, a couple of six mils. Change that pellet, don't... Um, okay. Yeah, don't don't go out of that pellet. I always, I always change the hook, the hook pellet. So, bearing in mind, we haven't fed nothing anywhere else. Oh, it's old. Bite on the drop. Might be a few little fish about. I'm just a little bit concerned if we on that meat short line. We might get bitted out early. That's probably why I've not fed it. Yeah, because I think if it had been in the wind, I think you could have fed it earlier. And also, I'm also thinking like how it's fishing as well. Because it's not great, is it? No. It's so I'm like, if we'd have gone long, hard. yeah, if we'd have gone long, or if we'd been on the feeder and you get one a chuck, then we'd have gone long on the pole and the fishing would have been really, really good. I'd have been right, let's feed that short line a little bit earlier. But with it being hard like it is and the wind off our back. So literally the short line, or are we going to use like, oh, like a margin, like a last No, hours? maybe, yeah. We will feed the margin, even if you just... You know, whilst you're fishing, just chuck a few six mils down there. Do you know what I mean? So if there is some moving in and out of the margins, at least you're, you're sort of giving them some up where 
they might just stay in the area. It's a tricky one at the moment, very, very tricky. This is what happens in matches. Hey, what a result. Another one. See, that was tap just coming back. Just tapping those few formulas in, wasn't yeah. it? You know what I mean? You're doing well, mate. It's tough. It's proper tough here. You yeah. just got to make the most of the situation. It's a better fish as well, isn't it? Is it looks at the moment that I'm not going to swim? Uh, I'm not sure about not going for a swim. I wouldn't say it was guaranteed at the minute. 50 50 at the moment. But you've drawn very similar to what I normally draw. Pants. What well up, mate? That's all a right. better size. Yeah, he's all right. Pound and a half, isn't he? Yep. Show him up for the customers. Well, not upside down, preferably. You know what I mean? How are you doing? Oh, see that. Come on, get back out. We ain't got the time. This is a match, remember? You said that show the Yeah, I showed a customer once. Should I feed again? Yep. Take, take, uh, change that pellet. Do and I then we, we've we been going probably about, what we've been going now, hour and, hour oh. and a, just under an hour and a half. So it's still early days. And it's tough, mate. It's, it's um, no one's taking it. But there's a few, there's a few, um, the, to be honest, the, pay, the places that they're catching are the places that I would would want you to have drawn. Do you know what I mean? Maybe I should get some coaching lesson from Power how to draw. Yeah, it. that that yeah on me. Put me in for a session on that. <laughs> I think you'd only want one session as well. You'd be job done. That's it. So just carry on what you're doing with that. Just dobbing them in the water before you ship out. And that stops them from obviously coming out on the way out and just makes them. We have put a bit of oil on them this morning. A bit of pellet oil. Just flick your pole, that's it. Flick them out so they just go in a little bit of an area, result. That's it, and then lift that out, drop it in nicely. And that had that on the drop, really, didn't it? Yes. They're there, they're just being a bit crafty at the moment. Why I don't like to fish for them. No, they are crafty fish. But there's one thing that's not happened out there is we've not caught any roach even on hard pellet. And I have been here before, and there are the signs that I'm looking for that if the little fish are feeding real heavily, that can be that can change. You know, change basically what you're going to be doing during the match. Do you think it's a good sign or a bad sign today that the small fish is not feeding? Well, I think it's a good sign because you can't really, don't really want to catch them on here. You don't mind catching the big skimmers, but you don't really want to be catching the roach and stuff because yeah. they're just not really going to do any good. If it was really, really tough, I would even put some micros in there. Okay. But I try not to because of the bottom, the and time the of year. Fish. Yeah, I think, oh, oh well, that was a big fish just top there. You know, if it was desperate desperation, then I would put some in and fish like hard pellet. You can even like change your hook length and put a, a piece of meat on even soft pellet, you know. We haven't done those soft pellets up really because I just yep. thought we'd get bitted out, but because there is an awful lot of roach in that in these lakes. We don't, I'd say it'd be nice if we just caught some, some skimmers like we did when we were practicing. But you're doing all right at the moment, mate. It definitely beating either side of you, so. Am I going to get a McDonald's meal? A what? A McDonald's? Yeah. Not yet. No, not definitely not. Um, you're definitely not doing it right just to get a McDonald's. Things will have to buck up a little bit for that, so. I might go and get your drink in a minute. So you're just feeding that little bit of bait and you're already putting any bait in, it's fizzing and you just got to be a bit patient and wait for a proper bite. Sorry, you've got oh, right, go on then. Right, so we've gone out on that long pole. 
not really great. There's not little, there's not a lot of little fish, is there? So that tells me that it might just be a nice opportunity. Who right. knows? Who knows if we get bitted out on that? Because it's still well, not try it. We just feed it. Go back out long for ten minutes, like then we'll go on it. Yeah. So we got about twenty pieces of meat, a few bits of corn, top kit in one. Just remember what you got yourself lined up with. Uh, you remember? Sort of. <laughs> yes. You got it. Yes. <laughs> Right, just bong that in, get it in there. So my thinking is, the long line's not great. This is the this tough area anyway. I think the guide to results right. It's got one F1, a few silver fish. He's trying shallow. The guide to results left. Probably got I don't know. Probably less than what Zolt's got. I would have thought. It's a bit of a struggle. Two on my left. He's catching on the feeder. Yeah, he's catching on the feeder. That's a good peg that is Zolt. The pegs that I would have wanted Zolt to be on are getting a few fish. Not loads, but a few. But where Zolt is, is, uh, it is going to be a tough one today. And I think we need, we will need to try and catch short. But there's fish on his long pole line. There's a few bubbles coming up. It might be the case of, like, if these pellets don't work, even though it's fizzy, we might have to just change to... Um, Maybe just putting a piece of meat on the hook so I have to change the hook length over. So that's not a problem. I only like 10 minutes just to see. Yeah, not long at all. So we'll go back on the long pole line for 10 minutes. Hopefully, it gets another one. It's just really slow at the moment. Not, not easy at all. But the other option is is to like change that long line. Even if we just go out there, we change the hook over to just a spade end hook, like a GPM. And just try a piece of meat on the hook. Because they're there, there's a few bubbles coming up. They're just really, really not really having a go. And there's everybody's pegs. I'm watching a few people and they're all feeding, all getting lots of bubbles and they ain't really catching anything. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah. When you come back in, we'll you can uh, black the float out because it's horrible. Yeah, it's a horrible light now that sun's gone in. Oh, dog coming over. So, give this another sort of five, six minutes, then we'll have a quick go short, and hopefully, I'm not sure. I think it's going to be a tough area because of the wind. But you never know. That meat line could fire up. It could be now. It could be late in the match. Could be nice. I'm really bit of a gamble. A yeah, and even if we get a Big Mac, you're not having a Big Mac. Big F1 you need, not a Big Mac. Right, Zolt, that, um, that definitely needs a black float out there now. Yeah. The sun, when the sun's out, you can see that yellow, but when it's in, it's an absolute waste of time. So let's get a little sharpie on there. You've had a few on that. What we'll do as well, because obviously we fed that like 10 minutes ago, didn't we, that meat line. I just want you to go on that and have a quick look. So we'll just, let's just get the sharpie. Did I give you the sharpie? No, you didn't. Are you sure? I did ask time here he is, here he is, he's coming over. Here you are. You, just dry that, dry that tip of that float off, and uh, yeah, mark him up. We might have to go like that, that way on the with it like that. Just go left to right, flick it. That's it. That'll make a massive difference when you go back out there. But I think, right, with the few bubbles coming up and it's being hard, I think it, it was the possibility we could change that long line to meat as well. You know when they're not really having pellets, it's hard, isn't it? It's, it's really difficult fishing. It's definitely not easy. No, it's not easy, and sometimes coaching, this is what you actually want. Well, to be fair, I would be more happy if we catch one of the chuck. Yeah, it would be nice if we were getting one of chuck, but you've not drawn, I think, My like I said. 
Okay, you're no, right you now. are very similar. That's we have got something similar. Thank Should them. we try the short line now? Yeah, definitely. So we'll just I'll have my sharpie back. Oh, oh I can see him going walkies. Thank you. He's doing all right, mate. It's hard. So we're going to just go in on that short line because we fed like 25 pieces of meat, a few grains of corn. We'll just go in that and um, some meat. Yeah, a bit of seven mil meat. Just look at like I showed you in the practice little session we've done. And then you can just flick that, just past the pole tip, not feed nothing. I just want to see if there's any little fish about. I'm hoping not, or if it's not too bad. That's it, just let that come back at us. So we've got a little 4B14. Excess carp on there. That's a roach bite, isn't it? Oh, yeah, well, we had a bit of a problem. I spoke to Zolt last night, and he, I said, have you got your lunch of meat sorted? He said, yeah, I've got some Spam. And I'm like, no, Zolt, that's not lunch of meat, that's Spam. He's like, I always use Spam. I'm like, well, oh, yeah, Zolt, look, you just missed that. Hello? Oh. The float's just gone under. Why are you yeah. looking at me? That was a nice bite as well, that. Right, just drop it in a little bit looser than that, not so tight, so it goes down to the bottom quicker. Just keep your eye on it. You've got to be on it, like Sonic. Like I said to you the other day, you've got to be on that. I mean, you miss a bite. Them F1s are so quick and crafty. But anyway, he thinks Spam is lunch of meat, and it's not. Spam is like ham, not pork. So, anyway, I had to bring the lunch of meat. So we have to, we, you actually did miss a bite there. We didn't even see it. Looks nice though, doesn't it, that? Look at that. Look at the excess carp. They sit absolutely superb. They do brilliant for big baits like meat and stuff. And if your eyesight's not great, then, or if you'd like a thicker float, I'm just trying to, this is what would be going through my mind now. There's a few bubbles on the pet line. They're hard to catch, hard to even just get a bite off of them. You know, do we put just a normal hook on instead of a hair rig and then go out there and try a bit of meat and start feeding a bit of meat because the difference can be huge some days. There's definitely, there's a few, there's a couple of areas we're being caught seem to be in the middle of the lake on both sides. That's old. Go on. That's it. Probably only a skimmer like, but it's a start. I don't mind them. Well then, Zolt, good strike. I've just got to watch so they take me face off with the land that handle. Right, you know what we'll do? We'll get one of those big cab pots on. That one you've got down by your um, hook box. Get him on. Possibly a pound or so. Yeah. Just get him around the, get him around the, that's it. Don't be scared of him. So we're gonna put the biggish cab pot on now. Fill that up with meat and uh, hopefully we'll get some more bites there. But this is how your match can change. You know, it's gonna be a tough one here today and um, we just gotta make the most of the situation. So get that big cab pot on Zolt. That decent yeah. one down by your hook box. Yeah, just, just, just need move, to speed things up a little bit if possible. Move the studs back because the last time you told me of that I haven't checked. What, the slime on the hook length? Uh, smaller or bigger? No, yeah. that one's alright. We can just fill him up, yeah. I don't really want to throw yet because I'm just thinking of the roach problems. And that's one thing you've got to consider when you go to a venue with lots of roach in that in it. That throw in. It's great throw and I love it, but it's early in the match and we've been going for like nearly two hours, we're only, you're not even halfway through yet. It might just make a problem with little fish. There's a guy over there feeding, I'm not sure whether he's feeding casters or pellets. Yeah, something like that. Yep, perfect result. So on the way out, tap that out and then drop your rig in just past, or drop your bolt just past. And then just flick that just past. 
You know when it just goes in nice, it's not tight. Yeah. And just let that go down and then really concentrate because the bites are so quick. And if this really gets going, I think that could be a, a key point to say even your long line. I think that the only problem we got is the wind is wrong for, for what we're trying to do really. I think if you had that wind in your face, you could concentrate on this line a lot of the match. But would you go back to the feeder line now? Well, it's a possibility, yeah. You just got to see what happens with this. So we'll give this a go and uh, I'll get back to you. So when, when you chuck this feeder back out now, just try and change your at length. <clears throat> so what we're going to do, we've taken a bit of a gamble. Yes. So when we come short on that meat and corn line, we actually caught a decent skimmer. And then literally, there was already any bites, was there? And that doesn't surprise me for the time of day, the venue, and obviously where the wind's blowing. Um, so what we've done, the long line, what do I mean? The long line on the hard pellet, it just might be time of day, but I'm just thinking for where we are, what's happening, why not take a bit of a gamble? So we've changed that to meat as well. So all Zolt's got to do is change his hook length <clears throat> from a hair rig GPM to a, a 16 stroke 14 GPM speed and just have a go out there. We've put like, I've just got him to put 30, 30, 40 pieces of meat and a few grains of corn out. And I've got him now starting to throw that meat and corn mixture on his top kit in one. Because if I'd have gone in there and it had been like absolutely rammed with little roach, you know, little tiny fish that you don't want to catch, then that's the sort of information I'm, I'm getting. Down the edge, we've that's not fed yet. Yeah, that's all right, I've seen. Four inches. It was four inch you had on, wasn't it? No, well, six inch I had on. Did you? Yeah. How can you? Did you have... Oh. I did have a six inch on it. What, on the long line? Yes. I thought you said it was four inches. No, six. Oh, you better have put four in, uh, six inch hook length then, haven't you? Well, take, don't put that on then. You are. So, that's on, that's on. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get that on camera? That was brilliant. He's nearly lost the, and he's, he's not even hooked it. That must have snapped you up. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that's stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. That was close to losing your rod. <laughs> and then what can you make that <laughs> second rod? So we're back out on the feeder at the moment. Got um, Zolt to try that short line with meat. That's it, mate, well done. Which, um, the nice thing is, uh, we didn't, we only caught one skimmer, but we didn't get bitted out, so. And so I've got him now to so start throwing a bit there. Because we got a couple of hours ago, do you want more than two and a half hours? We've just gone halfway through, I think. So we've just gone back out on the feeder. Definitely more fish being caught in the wind, rather than sort of where we are, to be honest. It's gonna be a tough, it's gonna be a tough one. Oh, hello, Zolt, he's on, isn't he? Mm. Yeah, he's on. Little no. fish, no? Yeah, there's a little fish, I think. You'll get that. So we've decided, well, I've decided that um, you decided. that long line, we'll take a bit of a gamble for where we are is to feed that meat and corn out long as well because that's somewhere that definitely the locals probably don't do very often if not at all and we might just go out there and get a bit of a run so we've got, so we've got him to start throwing bait short because when we went in there there definitely weren't any little fish 
which is good news in a certain way. So we're back on that feeder. Lovely that. The weather, the weather is looking a bit stormy at the minute. A bit like the fishing. It's a bit stormy. Are you going to get soaked today as well? Yeah, he's on. He's on. No? Well, I thought that was on. I would have struck at that. I don't know. It looks. It doesn't look pretty good at the minute. It looks like we're going to get some rain. Spruing up, isn't it? Freshen up. Just want that wind to be like that, where it's starting to turn around a bit. That would be easy. <clears throat> well, not when it's pouring down with rain. So yeah, we're starting to throw that short line. Long line we've dosed in, well not dosed, we've not put loads in, probably 30, 40 pieces. But that is now what you've got to remember. It's easy to throw that short line, but the long line that we've now turned into like a meat line took a bit of a gamble. We need to stop fishing that feeder. And um, that's how we wanted that win from the start really. So give it another cast, mate. You cannot leave that out there, it's pointless. Within two minutes, it's just a waste of time. So, just remember now, Zolt, you fed that like 15, 20 minutes ago, that long line. I would... Try it. No, one more cast. no, I just have one more cast on this, right? When you wind back in, put another 20, 30 pieces in and then go back out on the feeder for another 10 minutes. Okay. That's how you've got to work. That's what you've got to be thinking about while you're fishing. Cool, yeah, that is proper freshening up. You'll get with this cast. <clears throat> back at Zolt. I know I had to press the red button, Zolt. So back out on the feeder. The wind's turned at the minute. It looks really nasty, actually. Look at that. Oh, dear me. I'll be back in the van in a minute. That looks like we're going to get a bit of a storm. We need a storm. We get the fishing fired up. But he's back out on the feeder. Oh, just felt a spot of rain then. This might be... Um, might have a bit of a break at the minute. But he's doing all right. It's tough. There's a few people catching. I'm not sure. We can't see around the back of the island over there. Sort of around here. There's obviously people around here, which I can't see. Uh, there's a few fish being caught around here. Uh, this guy over here behind Zolt's head has had a few on a pellet wagon, a bomb, by that aerator. But we're back out on the feeder at the moment. That wind, even though that's... Um, a bit stormy. I don't mind that because the wind's turned. This is how we wanted the wind earlier. So I'm sat here on my box watching Zolt. Look. This is all nice and live for you guys. He's fishing a little, what was that, on a mini, mini bandom Zolt? Uh, no, actually I went back to the six mil. Six mil with micros round. Yes. Yeah, just micros. It's funny because it went, you know, there was a few fish there at the start and it went absolutely dead. And the pole line, the problem is we've gone on the pole and the pole line's been, like, not good. But the pole line's not been very good for anybody, really. Definitely a few fish over there. That guy's doing well over there. Feels like a better fish. Yeah, it might be a carp with a bit of We've lost one. Well, it is a carp, Zolt. Is it? Hold well on, mate. Is it a carp? Yeah? yeah? Five pound, isn't he? No, three or four. You reckon? I reckon he's more like four or five. So, yeah, the long line, 11 metre line, we've potted some meat. I'm going to get in now to put that fish in his net and pot some more meat out, meat and corn, that mix. That mix there. Let's have a look at him. Don't hold him up because you might drop him in like I do, remember? Oh, hello. Yeah, he's all right. Yeah, so well then, get him back. Yeah, so I'm going to get him to pot some more of that mix up there, that meat and corn. 
lovely mix that is. And these are the sort of things you've got to do in your fishing. Not too much salt, I do. I mean, really speaking, to catch up, because we are behind, I think it's just the area, really. We will need to cut, and that wind, if that, if that wind stays as it is, um, that will definitely help us. So 11 metres, you see that wind now. That wind was bang off of our back. And now it's blowing like left to right, slightly towards us, which is bang on. So we'll go back out on the method for a bit. But he's doing all right. He's doing well. His casting's brilliant on the feeder. And uh, yeah, he's settling down nicely now. Still on the feeder. Does left me alone because the weather is not so nice. It's hiding behind the back of the van. Still fishing on the feeder, double loaded. Change it for yellow wafter. Looks like it's working well at the moment. We do a bit of gamble on the pole line. On the long line, what we fed with hard pellet, we changed for meat and corn. And actually soon, I'm supposed to check it out, how it's going over there. And I have to feed the short line as well, because there's one going to turn me off. Not too much. He's telling me off. And yeah, it's fishing very hard. Casting regularly on the feeder. It's not really a point to leave it longer. Most of the bites coming like in 30 seconds a minute. Double loading the feeder with two mil pallets. Right, quick catch up. He's had a few fish on that feeder and literally chucked back out and it was great. He did, he has lost a few. Just pulled a little bit too hard. So we're just gonna go on this um, 11 meter line, long line, where we've primed up twice with the big pot. And then hopefully you can drop in there. He's still now, obviously the wind, the wind, you can see the wind's turned. The wind has changed. Mm, it has changed. We've got a bit of a stormy bit of rain coming down at the minute. It's not too bad. I was just sat out in the van for a little bit, get out of it. Right, so I'll just tap it and then try, because that wind's turned, just try and flick that hook bait. Yeah, slightly up, slightly up wind, that's it, like that. And we'll just hopefully, there's not a lot being caught on the long pole though. For most of it, there's a lot of them like fishing bombs and stuff. But it's definitely slowed down. When Since that wind's, um, since that wind's changed, it seems to have, bear in mind, it's blown. <clears throat> it's, it's gone on a completely different angle. It's, it was blowing straight over that side. And now it's blowing like left to right, slightly in Zolt's face which hopefully, with a couple of hours to go, it might just bring some fish in the area. It's definitely slowed down, you know. Well, it's not really got going for some people. <clears throat> it's definitely been a difficult. Like no, you've done all right, Zoe. You've had a few. It's not easy. Um, so, yeah. The nice thing is, he's just sat out there now. There's and there's not already any bites. That's all. When are we going to feed the edge? Well, I reckon now, in the next sort of, next half an hour or so, we'll put some micros down there. Okay. Yep, that's a bite then. Right, see if you meet, see if you look bait still on. Yeah, but you've got to strike harder than that. When I'm fishing with meat, I would literally, that would be struck off. Okay. I'd be coming back. I don't mess about. All right, so just bear that in mind. So we've taken a bit of a gamble because if it does go, if that meat does go out there, you could end up having a real good run. It is difficult because we're trying to find a, you know, trying to find an area where we can get a run of fish and it's not easy. The pole is really, really slow. The feeder is you get little, little 
spells you've got to leave it go back on it <clears throat> there's definitely not like a lot of fish feeding at the moment but hopefully I mean obviously he's just chucking bait on his short line so he's getting into a lot of nice little rhythm now understanding that you've got to look after the lines that you're not fishing whilst you're fishing another line Actually, that's the hardest part. It is hard. It's hard to, it's hard to remember it all, isn't it? Yeah. When you're trying to concentrate, but you that's where... You two lines. Yeah. So, anyway, it's going to start raining. I'll get back to you shortly. Back on... Now we had a little bit of a rainstorm, so I've been sat in the van. Results, but still on the feeder at the moment, and we're just putting... We've got a little yellow band on, and we're just putting neat ground bait which is Zolt's preferred ground bait of Match Method Mix Marine. He seems to use that quite a lot. Seems to like it, don't you, Zolt? Yeah, it's lovely ground bait. He loves that ground bait, like the mould. So still double loading it like we did this morning. That seems to be working. And it is still odd fish, really. But Zolt's coming back. His casting's getting better and better. He's risking it in those reeds. Very, very close to those reeds. Oh, I think you need to come back just a fraction. It's now started pouring down rain again. Things are like coming back and sit on the box. But the pole in this area, you might be in the reeds there, Zolt. Not sure. But the pole in this area, you know what I said? There's a guy, he had a nice little run on the pellet waggler. He's over here. Just below like Zolt's head. He's uh, oh well done Zolt. He's done re reading you any? Reeds? Yeah. Yeah, a bit close to the reeds that was, mate. I think. So yeah, he's had a few fish short. Obviously we're just priming up the pole lines. Um down to the left the left of Zolt is really, really tough. Nothing at all on the pole, that guy there. He's been fishing the pole, not actually seen him catch a fish on the pole. And then the guy to his left had a few early and caught nothing. The guy to Zolt's right over there, very, very little. And that little area over there in the middle of that bank, they've had a few. There's one guy fishing short all most of the match and the guy to the left's probably doing the best what I've seen. Yeah, tough, really tough at the minute, but odd fish, but nice fishing. There's an odd fish to be caught. So it's just winding in a triffid. Cleaning that. Look at him, cleaning, cleaning the recycling. Oh, and I'm just going to get out of the rain. So we're just going down the edge now, because Zolt did actually see a fish move. Now, whether we catch anything or not, I don't know. Corn or meat? Bit of meat or corn, Zolt. I don't think it really matters when you go in there for a first chuck. So we've been priming that up, but my honest opinion is you never know with this situation, but I can only just sort of use the rest of the lake as a guide. Should I feed Mike or so? Yeah. And bearing in mind, I think it's quite tough today in this area. Very, very tough. I'll be quite surprised if we up one. Um, so was, we can catch on that method, but I'm just thinking, well, we need to have a look because if we do go down the edge, there's, there's some bigger fish. So just tap them micros out and just go straight in it, so just lower that straight in the mug. I can't see, unfortunately. And I, I would say, you know, we've been priming that up for over an hour. Um, I would expect, really, within a few minutes, five minutes, we, we would get a bite of an F1 or a carp. I certainly wouldn't be giving it too long. And I certainly would have been in that I'm sure if we'd have been in that wind a little bit, we'd have been concentrating on that a lot sooner than what we did or what we have done. But I'm looking around and there's some nice areas with some room with the wind blowing in. And they're even there not catching down the edge. It's definitely been moody today. It's been proper moody. But we've lost a few, though, haven't we? How many have we lost on the feeder? A dozen? Not that much. I'm telling you now, Zolt. Yes, much. you have. You have lost a few on the method. I reckon we've lost 10 fish on the method. Well, some in the reeds, which is unfortunate, and then 
a couple have come off. Not not big, big fish, but oh, they're all decent size. Just throw a bit more bait on that short line, Zolt. It's just one of them days, I think, where it's just not, it's just not been a pole day. It's not happened. All the weights today, I think, will be on bomb, waggler, and feeder. Nothing, no bites, no, not a sign? Uh, sign, yes, but not, not a proper bite. What, roach bites? Probably it is a small fish. It doesn't sound very good, that's old. <laughs> what have you got, a reed? Yeah. Do you want me to go down and pick it out for you? Can you? Well, I can do and save you a bit of health and safety. No, that's, it's fine. Got him? Yeah. Oh, thank God for that. Right, just have one more quick go down and then we'll have a go short just to see. Literally, we'll give that another 30 seconds. Just lower that straight in. It's been, a, it's been moody, hasn't it? It's been funny. What's been frustrating, looking around the lake today, is uh, there's been quite a few fish caught on a bomb, and that's on the siltiest part of the lake. And I've seen it on these lakes before, but the Arlong pole's not been much cop, but the bomb's been good. Only in certain areas, to be fair. There's a couple of guys, our guys to the right fished the bomb, and he's only caught one or two fish on it. But that's what makes me just think that on a short pole, maybe, and the weather, the weather conditions, being the wind off our back, we maybe should have fished a top kit in two. Whether that would have made a huge difference, I'm not too sure. But if it, if it would have fished well, that top kit in one would have been, would have been the place to fish without a doubt because of the depth. We had plenty of depth there. I'm probably overthinking it a little bit like that, but. No good salt, is it? There's nothing there, not mate. No, it's the same with everybody. It's just, it's just not happened. Tiny fish there, but yeah. Not. Let's 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 have a quick go on that top kit in one because you've been priming that still. And you've give it a go at the end of the day, and I think, I think if it had been fishing well, if we'd have caught on that short line, I'm a hundred percent certain we'd have caught down that edge. But I think the short line tells you that. Unfortunately, they've just been, they've just not had a go. So, throwing's pretty good, mate. Getting better by the I think we'll just give that, like, a few minutes. Hello, Zolt. Oh, that was on the drop. Might have been a roach, eh? And then if this doesn't go within five minutes, we'll have the last last few minutes on the feeder, see if we can get a couple more. <clears throat> the thing is, we had to have a look because do you know what I mean? We've not caught enough. Anyway, if, you'd, if we'd have fished the feeder all day, I think we could have caught, I don't know, I think we'd have caught quite a decent weight, to be honest. I just want this to fire under now with a few great big F1s. <clears throat> Come on, just want that to fire under now. Go back to the feeder. Now nah, give it a few minutes. Yeah, result. That was a proper bite. No, you should have been on that. That wasn't a strong enough strike. That's where you really got to latch into it because obviously you've got to try and bring the hook through the meat. That that could have been an F1. That could have been anything. I think that would have been a quality fish. That. really got to like concentrate and whack you know
if I'd have missed that bite, if that had been me fishing, I would have been coming back putting another piece of meat on. There's no way that meat would have been on. Not when I have struck it that. That was like a little liner then, wasn't it? Like some, yep. oh, oh, oh yes, here we go, Zolt, come on. That was a proper bite. That would have been a good fish, that. Just give her an F1 or a carp. So don't throw anything this time. It'd be nice to get a few on that. Or just get one on it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Late. Still have got 10 minutes. To yeah, go. don't worry about the time, you just keep going. Oh, yes, Altus. Nice skimmer, eh? My bite was amazing on that. Yeah, well done. This is what can happen, though. I mean, I mean we've had like three bites there, haven't we? Yeah. That last. It's just a fortunate, but obviously, this does happen in matches. A good fisher, them. If you get them lined up, it's a bit late, admittedly, but it's nice to get. It's nice for you to, that was a proper bite as well, and a proper strike. Yeah, bring it back a bit too tight. That's it, and then down. Because it ain't the case that not too much bait, just nice and steady. Yeah. Just concentrate like wallop. It always amazes me when you catch short that you can like go on there and now and again have a liner that was. Little fish liner. Come on. Let's see if we get another one or two. Looks perfect, doesn't it? Looks yeah. like it's gonna absolutely fly under every chuck. Yeah, well done mate. It's unbelievable, isn't it? The time of day. Oh, it's a hope. I might have been fouled up that. That wasn't the Yeah, look at the bubbles. Look, that thing's just hit the bottom. I wonder if that was an eel. <laughs> eh? Why? Is it eel in the thing? Well, I don't know. Look at the bubbles. It's just hit the bottom about 60 mile an hour. And the... it's, just... it's unbelievable. It's like a catfish. It might have been a big eel, that. <laughs> and it's, but it's, I reckon that was an eel. I reckon you fouled up an eel and it's gone straight back down into the, into the hole. Weird. That was a big fish. Mm, I reckon it was an Some, eel. Something big. Yeah, I reckon it was an eel, that. What did you have on your hook? A little bit of slime? No, I didn't have slime. No. Just wait for it. That's little fish, that. Could have done with that, not happening, really. Do you know what I mean? Look, that's an eel. It's gone in its, in its hole out there and it's dead, I reckon. Oh, so what are you looking at? That's just literally buried and you just watched it. What was you looking at then? You weren't on Tinder, was you? <laughs> no, I'm not on Tinder. That was a beautiful bite and you weren't even looking, I don't think. Took my phone well, what so was I, you looking at? I can't be on the Tinder. Oh, that could have been a £10 carp. Come on. Since the rain, it's the whole lake is switched off. Yeah, there's a few fish coming out. Not, not loads, mate. Was that a bite? Yeah. Wasn't, since I didn't actually see that. Was it a proper fly under? Not a proper bar, it was a decent yeah. bite. And the little bubble just come out there as well, look. See them bubbles? Yeah. Yep. Well done, mate. Right, take your top, take that section off, throw like 10 bits of bait. Where you just hooked it. That's it. It's only a little stocky in it, but. Oh God, we ain't getting much luck today, Bert, are we? No. I, I, did, I didn't pull hard now. No, 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 that wasn't your fault, it was just a stocky. No, you played that perfectly. It just come off, unfortunately. It started to come by while you're keeping it, didn't it? That's it. So what you want to do is try and get it in there, but relaxed, if you know what I mean. Start yeah. to sort of show people that. It's sort of, you put it in there, but it's not, everything's not tight. 
so it goes down quite quickly the hook bait I'm really disappointed about the edge no I had a feeling so I think because that line's been not good I think the edge is sort of followed suit really hasn't it oh hello Ooh. try and strike a little bit more like fierce if you strike as well as you do on the feeder then we'd have no problems at all no, I got a little scale a little foul look roach or something that was come on you got any second that'll be all right I think unless it is a is it a six hour match no I don't think so no, he's, he's chucking all his bait in, so it must be any second. Come on, get one one for the one for the camera at the end, Zolt. Don't Big 10 pounder short. Oh, that's it. Starsky and Nuts have just come to the rescue. <laughs> well done, mate. That's been a tough one, hasn't it? Yeah. It has been tough. This was a hard day in No, it's been all right. You've done well. It's just unfortunate. I think where you've you've come on really really well like during the match a bit rusty at the start and then got going but well done mate and we'll have a way and you've done brilliant from where you've been because like either side you've caught absolutely nothing and i think you know i i just have a feeling that i'm supposed to stay on the feeder all day yeah but it's a coaching day i can't just you know yeah in hindsight hindsight's a beautiful thing isn't it and I think, yeah, if you'd have set the feeder up and just said, I'm going to fish the feeder all day, I reckon you could have caught, who knows, you could have caught 80, 90 pound, possibly. Yeah. But if that short line would have gone, it, you know, that's where you can get in the frame. Yes. I think you was, you, you was always on the back foot here, so because of the conditions. But, yeah, you know, you can only, you can only catch what's in front of you at the end of the day. Yeah. And, and you've done, I think you've done absolutely excellent. So I'm not going to swim? No, I'm not even going to chuck it a bucket of water over you. Thank you. I think That's you've been. I think you've done really well. You've done us proud. Thank you. So uh, we'll weigh in. <clears throat> yeah. So we'll weigh in and um, let you know the results. I know he's beat either side of him. Um, like we just said, like I just said, the result. Yeah. In hindsight, we should have just probably set a feeder up. And there's been quite a lot of fish caught on the bomb today, which is really, really weird because it's warm. It's like muggy, bit of thunderstorms about. And there's been a lot of fish down the middle on the on the siltiest part of the lake, probably. Long pole has been, for most people, what I've seen from where we are, long pole has been an absolute waste of time. And the short pole, they've caught a few fish in the wind, out of the wind, they've caught very little. But there's been fish there at the end, literally last knock-ins, last 10 minutes. We've had like five or six bites. Um, yeah, so we'll weigh in. I know he's done he's done really, really well. And we'll have a chat and tell you the result when we've uh, when we've done the weigh in. Right, well, the match is over. Zoltz had £41, and I'm very pleased to give you your section money, Zoltz. Thank you very much, Desmond. And it's fished very, very difficult, I think, today. It was a hard day. But it I think fishing. it's been a real good match to fish. I, I Definitely, I did learn a lot. Yeah. I did learn a lot. Uh, the hardest bit for was for me today, the, the timing, 100%. Hmm. The, to, to remember that feed constant, not constantly, but feed regularly all of the lines, mm. not too much, but still feeding. And even when I had a bite on the feeder, keep feeding the short, yeah. cut a pull the long line. It, it was the, it's, it's really difficult to, to concentrate on so many different. Yeah, it's not, I don't, I mean, I don't find it. I think you just got to get into the mode of what you did. As you went along in the match, you definitely start, got the feel for it. You know, it's like when I say, yes. right, Zolt, look, we need to take a gamble. 
as it happens, the gambles haven't really paid off. The long pole was, for everybody, has been tough. There's been hardly anything caught on the long pole, and there ain't been much caught on the short pole. The fish have been really moody today. Um, what, 77 pounds won the match. It was a 77, a 76, and it dropped down to 50, and Fazolts had 41. So I think, and, I lost quite a few. and you've lost 10 or 12 fish on the feeders. Some have gone in the reeds because there is a massive reed bed opposite, which you obviously know about. And you've lost a few winding back. Well, that's F1 fishing. So I reckon, you, in theory, you've probably lost 20 pound off the hook yeah. and a few snags and stuff. So his results should have had 60, well, not to say should have, he, you know, he possibly could have caught 60 odd pound and 77 pounds won the match. But I think the most important thing you've learned, Zolt, is if our little timings that we've done, and this is important for you guys as well, is whilst you're fishing, you've got to look at your timings, different baits, obviously. We've taken a gamble today to fish meat yeah. and corn short. And if that would have gone, we had a few bites at the end. There was definitely a few fish in his peg in the last five minutes. Unfortunately, that's been this de whole day all over, really. But if that would have worked, if we could have gone on that long pole, maybe had to go short, and it didn't work, go back out on the feeder, prime the short pole back up again, gone on that and had a few different on the edge, it would have been an amazing, it's been a good day's fish anyway, but it would have been absolutely mint. But that's what you've got to do as a match angler. You know, we don't come here, results only ever fished it, well, he's never fished it. No, I never fished it. So, before. and I already fish it at all. In, in hindsight, if we'd have fished the feeder, back to back, I'm sure result would have been taking home the winner's, the winner's check. It wouldn't have been a big check, but you'd have been taking it home for certain. I'm, I'm not sure, but definitely. Uh, It'd been close. Close. It'd have been close. And it's been a real good match because it's been tough. And these are the days when you actually learn, I think, more about being a match angler. I mean, some things don't work some days, some things do. And these are the matches where you either go home and you're nice and happy or you want to smash your van in because you've been really, really close and probably made a couple of bad decisions on the way. But for him, I think it's been a, le a massive learning curve and I hope it's been a learning curve for you guys. And I hope this carries on because I think it's really important that people like me, that I take things for granted, pass this information on to you people and you understand what goes through our minds. So... I really hope that we carry on with this little series yeah. because I learn a lot as well. So do you want to fish another one? Yes. Yeah, I yes, bet you definitely. do. Yeah, I bet you do. Yeah, well, that's going to be some time coming because I, I want to go fishing. Maybe I'm going to choose a different coach. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm going to keep you. It's not very nice, is it? Oh, there you go. Just got a little chuck of bucket of water over there. No, 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 don't. You don't no, do that's that. right. Well, congratulations, mate. You fished really, really well. Thank you very much. And you're under a lot of pressure. Definitely, a lot of pressure. Definitely. You're very, very put nervous. Me under pressure. Yeah, I will do. I'll put anybody under pressure. So, anyway, I hope you've liked it. Comment below who you would like, to, you know, maybe me or someone else to take you out coaching. Um, you never know when you lucky guys might be coming out of me one day you never know what's around the corner for a, a maybe a Christmas special so there you go I hope you like the video like and subscribe for the Preston YouTube channel to make sure you get lovely good videos like this and thanks for watching see you later